Hey, Lou. Hello. What's up? Anything good? I'll let you know in about oh, 15 my. minutes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if you come to complain, your time's up. It's been a long time since I've been here, so I hope you uh, take a word of life. Uh, don't let the horses. Yeah. Call meeting to order at seven o'clock. Roll call. George Nall. Eric Harden. Sean Harley. Randy Sneed. Angela Resendez. Derek Jones. Lisa Mullaney. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Minutes of 7 6 of 2022 regular session. There is one change, Randy, at the top um, during the roll call. Angie was here. So I need to change that in the minutes, but if you could pass them. Other ways to change, that would be great. Motion to approve with the uh, changes stated by the Treasurer. Second. We have a motion and a second to pass the minutes of 7 6 2022 with a change, noting that member Rudendis was here. Any other uh, further comments? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Abstain. No, was not here. Citizens' input. Looks like we have a lot of citizens. Go ahead. Go ahead. I've got a, a check for a Lucas. I'm going to mess this last name up, I'm sure. Uh, Shrink Tramer? Is that person here? For the dare? No. Okay. All right. Do you want me to take your picture with the check, or do you want um, to wait and see if you can get a hold of them and give it to him at the next meeting? Yeah, let's try to do that. Okay. Do that. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Eric. Anyone else? Uh, yeah. Go ahead, sir. Um, and you are? My name is Roger Lemonian, and I live on Walnut Street. Just uh, two houses. On I live on the east side of Walnut Street. Mm -hmm. Two houses from Clinton. And uh, my my concern, I, I talked to Todd, and uh, my concern is the sidewalk they're going to put in. Uh, I just have a few questions. Can I ask those questions? Mark, do you want to address that? Or? Sure. You can ask. Okay. I wrote them down so I, you know. Uh, first of all, how and why is the state doing this? The county or is Argus doing it? Uh, it's a joint effort with the state uh, through a grant program. Okay. My, my next question is uh, with the uh, U.S. Postal, uh, the west side of Clinton is mailboxes and all of our mailboxes are on the north side of uh, Highway 10 Poland Street. Uh, has that side of town ever been annexed? Yes, all of that side of town is annexed, yes. Yeah. Annexed, yeah. So the Postal Service had you put a box in for the safety of their carriers because there wasn't sidewalks. Okay. So that's why they had you put a box in. Do they plan to put uh, I and I'm speaking for, yeah, I was actually I, out working. I, I assume you're going to ask if they plan to do, have you do away with that and put them on the house. I have no idea. That would be a postal issue. Yeah, I did have so, that question. Yeah, written down. that would and, be a and, postal and, issue. You'd have to ask them or once it's done, I assume they would notify you if they wanted you to remove your postal box from right. the street, put it on the house. Right. Some, uh, I was outside working and three of my neighbors came over and talked to me about it. So some of these questions are theirs. So they couldn't make it. Uh, uh, but you don't know if, if it's going to be postal boxes or not. I, yeah, I can't answer that. That would be a post office issue. Okay. And, and uh, so uh, I know in some cities uh, they bill people when they put in a sidewalk. Are we being billed? Oh, no. no. This is done okay. totally strictly with a grant. And, and the snow removal ordinance on a sidewalk. Uh, 
uh, is there so many hours? Uh, one neighbor says, I think you have till noon. 24, 24, 24 hours. hours. 24 hours. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell him. Uh, and and um, as you all know, Walnut Street Highway 10, there is a sidewalk. It's not the best sidewalk. It's kind of overgrown, no edging, kind of moldy. Uh, on the north side of the street, uh, what is the purpose? Uh, what is the justification for this uh, sidewalk? Uh, wh where, if it's on my side of the street, it leads to a curve. And yes, which will cross and then go because obviously we have a pond that's down or a park that's off of Pond Street. Right. So in order to get from this side of town there without crossing, uh, so when in doubt, when the town when we look at those, we try to pick less points of contact traffic wise okay so uh, our problem with the state road we weren't able to put a crossing there at 10 to okay. go across on the other side uh, so they'll also add a sidewalk from clinton street down around to indiana avenue on the north side okay to get to that part. yeah both of both sides of walnut street will end up having sidewalks just like both sides of michigan streets have sidewalks e even uh I don't know his name, uh, Joe. <laughs> uh, okay, just to the west of Clinton Street okay. on the north side, there will be a sidewalk or there will not? Yes, so there from will. Clinton Street down around to Indiana Avenue on the north side. And it will go down to the curve and then- It will go down around, yep. Over to, and they'll have a crossway at that yes, last- at S Indiana curve. Avenue. And okay. we can do it there because it's actually will be on Indiana Avenue and not on State Road 10. So okay. we've got- yeah, uh, the neighbor on that side of the street asked me to ask you. He wasn't sure if you were going to put one in. Uh, and the last question everybody asked, uh, one neighbor was concerned because he had a, a crimson maple, and he noticed that the sidewalk over here, uh, there's grass for about 14 feet, and then the sidewalk. There's the curb, a grass, uh, and then the sidewalk. He wanted. He said. Talk about the part where the park starts up here. No, he's talking about the sidewalk. On the, the north side, side of. Yes. Yeah, so from the curb to the end of the sidewalk was 14 feet. Ah uh, yes. From, okay. Not from the outside, inside curb. Yeah. What we we just walked it off yeah. of our feet. Okay. So it's not an accurate yeah. measurement. Uh, but my one neighbor said he had a, a, a crimson maple, and a, another shrub. It is. The sidewalk that's going to go in on the south side from Clinton on, uh, he wanted to know how far that will go in and will it take his crimson maple. I can't answer that today. We'll get all that information from INDOT. So INDOT from, from side of road has 15 feet in what they call a right away. Right, right. So if you look on like GIS, your property line, I don't want to say it's your property line, Derek can answer this better than I can, but you'll see where it actually stops 15 feet from the road. Okay. That line will show there. So in that, I mean, they've got their right of way there, so it'll be somewhere in that. But what we'll try to do is obviously it'll line up and be straight. Right. So there is some play in there. Normally they do try to keep a section between the curb and the sidewalk and then put the sidewalk. But uh, if his tree has to be taken, he's saying, he wanted me to ask, he says he has no say so. so if it's within that, that uh, within that allowance. Right way, correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you folks don't mind, I would like to just leave and go to the fair. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take an elephant here. Yeah, and I'll leave it for you. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy it. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you uh, for answering my questions. And y'all have a nice evening. Thank, thank you. Mr. Byers. Hi. Good evening, everyone. My name is Bob Byers. I live on East South Street. Um, I brought this up last year and let me start off by saying I have no issues with the employees of the department. <clears throat> My concern is with the take-home vehicle that the chief of police has. He's got his take-home vehicle for emergency purposes to be called up here off hours, whatever, fine. He's on vacation for 12 days straight and that's sitting in his driveway serving the town of Argus to absolute zero capacity. 
I asked last year and the response I was given was, well, there is no policy for take-home vehicles, so we can't technically make him leave it here. And part of that concern is not just the fact it's doing absolutely zero benefit to the town sitting in his driveway while he's gone on vacation, but we've had a recent string of breakdowns within the fleet of the police department recently, and at one point we were down to, I believe it was one or two vehicles. That was it. That's not true. Well, there were two, Sean, there were two sitting at the mechanic shop. We only have four. That leaves two down on all vehicles. One was there for a service job. We've been down one for a transmission. It was there for less than three hours. Okay. It's called spade to spade, Bob. Fair enough, but I mean, when you see two there, you presume they're both down for whatever reason. So you know what they say about assumptions. That's the, the transmission in the oil pan. That's the same vehicle. I'm not uh, part of the police commission. I have nothing to do with it. Sean here is the president of the police commission. No, really the town council owns the police vehicles. The police commission does not own them. That would be true. That's, that, that's a true fact. Same with the town owning the fire engines and ambulances, not the territory. That's technically not true. No, because we turn them over. Right. Oh, I apologize. I thought it was the same. My apologies. But as far as the police car, uh, that's something that we've been... Was there... An order the police commission, oh. the police commission, many years ago, we were, we were going through all this and we didn't have a way to do what we wanted to do at that time with employees and everything else. And at that time we were down employees and we were looking for ways to enhance. Achieve to be able to make so he could get back and forth and do things in an emergency time frame. We had plenty of cars, and we actually have one more now than we had then. And the town police commission made a voted and made a recommendation to the town council to allow the chief of police to have a take home vehicle under those parameters. At that time, when that was presented to the town council, that was, I don't know who's at George, I think you're probably the only one up here that was on that council. Um, the town council unanimously voted in favor of that recommendation, and that's the way it has been since. And that's about all I can tell you about the creative. So him being on vacation, yeah. Is upsetting. Is uh, in an emergency, and we really needed him. He would come back. This, this is a staycation, so to speak. He's not actually like gone somewhere. Well, then he's. I don't know. I'm, I was asking. I, I don't remember. Because <coughs> if but, he's but again, he's been allowed. Oh, he's here by the town council to keep his car at home. Now we have three other vehicles, so. We have plenty of vehicles. I don't think anybody, nobody has to walk patrol, do they? No. Okay. And if we have to go get it, we can go get it. Yes. If something, if something would break down, let's just say one or two of them would just break down, things happen. We can send someone down and pick up the car because it does belong to the town. That's true. But you know, uh, again, it's something we've allowed, and it's going to stay that way. Okay. May I rec make a recommendation to the town council? Review the county's take home policy. The sheriff's office says if you're, I believe, unless it's been changed, if you're gone more than five days, your car's sitting at the sheriff's office in the event it is needed. I also have an issue with the take home car policy at the time, at this very time. Um, unless it's been changed, I've heard rumor through town the police officers are not allowed to patrol 31, correct? That is correct. For temporary. Due to? Due to high gas prices. So we're still allowing the chief to drive his car down to Rochester. That's a totally separate, totally separate instance. It still takes You're gas, You're trying Sean. to make mountain out of molehill, Bob. It still takes gas, Sean. I'm not disputing that, but 
That car is given to him for a specific reason by the town council. Which leads back to the other situation. A year and a half-ish, maybe, maybe a year, two years, there was a missing child around the corner from both Erica and myself. Now, I'm not calling her out. I'm just letting you know the area the child is missing from. Nobody called the chief. He's got a car for emergency purposes. My, the answer I was given was, well, that we didn't feel it was necessary to call him, but in the meantime, we dispatched the fire department out to help look for the kid. Bob, you, uh, Ten deep breaths, huh? you um, have to understand there are internal department policies that are administered by the chief of police in, in those cases. Aaron's sitting right there. I bet you could tell you if he needed to get on Corey, he needed Corey up here. He could count on Corey to be here as fast as he could get here. And I'm not disputing that. Okay. So, so you're trying to twist something into something that it's not. If they needed Corey in that instance, they'd have called Corey. I was notified that day as well as being on the police commission. So I know everything was going on that day. And you felt it wasn't necessary to call the chief up, but the whole fire department got dispatched. How do you know the police chief wasn't called? How do you know he wasn't notified? I was told so by the clerk's office. How do they know? Whoa, who told you that? I'm not saying it was you. I don't recall who it was. This was almost two years ago. But when I called in to ask for it, I'm ridiculous, Mr. Hart. I'm sorry, Bob. This is ridiculous. I, I'm just asking questions because none of it makes sense. <laughs> the, thing, the only thing that makes sense is this. The town council allows the chief of police, whether it be Corey Bowman, whether it be Aaron, whether it be any officer, Rodney Rudd, doesn't matter. But they are allowed to take the car home because they are on, they're almost, and I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, Sean, but I, they're almost on a 24 hour call. Yep. And anytime we need them, they need to get here. There's nothing going to get them here faster than that car with those lights on. Okay? Correct, you're absolutely right. So we're we'll allowing them to do that. Yeah, they're burning gas. He does live in Rochester, you know, but still, it's protection for this community and that's why it's being done it's protection for this community now as far as we took them off the highway yes the police commission did take them off the highway because there was a lot of get the price of gas and there's a budget for the fuel absolutely and to keep the budget even the city um, the employees here they don't run the trucks let them idle and everything like they used to we've cut back on everything to this gas price stabilizes somewhere correct so that's the answer on that so this is going to, to, it's brought before the town council by the police commission again to make a vote on what to do with the police chief car. It's going to still be taken home by him and whether he's on vacation or whether he's not. And again, we was brought up, Councilman George uh, brought it up that if we need that car, we can get it. We can get it in a heartbeat. It doesn't take uh, anything. So. It's nothing for, I don't think the community has to worry at all. It's still well protected. You know, we have six full-time police officers. These guys are doing their job. And well, they they're are. doing a great job. Yes, they are. I'm and not arguing we, that at and, all. You know, uh, I even heard a complaint, uh, I believe it was from you, about uh, have not having an officer walk through the fairground. Aaron has been, Aaron and Brad both on that well, topic have been okay, walking through. Okay, so the officer that you mentioned, though, was a busy man. He wasn't like he was sitting over here in the corner waiting for somebody to come speeding by. He had to, he had a couple of jobs to do to take care of. And you know, there's only so many hours in his shift. Oh, absolutely. So walking through the fair is not it is a necessity maybe, but when you can't do it, you can't do it. If absolutely. Aaron gets called out right now and he has to take off an emergency and he's decided he's going he can't do it. Oh I understand. So that, all yeah. right, so you know all nothing's gonna change. So you know, just we're gonna kind of let this go, and this it's we're gonna stay the way it is. Now that's the answer to your questions. Good deal, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Yes. Go ahead. My name is Lou Borough. I live on Logan Street. You got the same problem we had two years ago. Barney Beard. They still ain't fixed the house. They had several people do the roofing. They ain't never come back. I got cats on there. 
now. Then also we got bees going in their house. Can I interrupt you for just one second? Yeah. Are you going to take care of that? Hang tight. Yeah. About 10, 15 minutes you'll hear an update right. on we, the beers. We have a solution. Good. Uh, this like is, Mr. Jones will take care of it and, and he'll, he'll tell you what's It's going. something we've been dealing with about 45 days now. You haven't ever been to a council meeting, you probably know one way or the other. But we've got a stack here of properties that are being addressed and that's one of them that we're going to update tonight, okay? Well, I ain't seen no improvement for two years. Wrong place. And I would agree with that. That's why the town's moving forward with it. Right. So, again, just as soon as I can go through these properties, we'll give you an update on that, okay? I get very impatient. Because my house is clean, fixed up, got that house. Actually, needs to be torn down. Because you got holes in the floor. Got tarps on the roof, still been there for two years. Blue. Still ain't never been uh, taken care of. Blue. <coughs> give him ten. Give him fifteen minutes. Give, give. Give, give right, him, please. Give us just because it's, it's, right, it's being right. addressed. It, yeah. Okay. All right, buddy. Thank I'll you. wait. It's unfortunate the time frame that it takes to get anything done and the cost that it takes to get anything I done. I don't like that. But. It, it's just, a, believe me, it's a lengthy, see, expensive see process. What it is. So just wait for Derek. See what it is. Okay. When we fixed our house, we got an FDA loan with no problem. And Barney Beard had a chance with all that money the government gave him. I don't know what the hell they done with it. Probably nothing. Okay. All right. So just okay? give, give us a few minutes of this meeting. state my opinion. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, I was just asking about the, <clears throat> if you guys made any progress about the chickens. Your name, sir? Uh, Robert McMillan. Live at 304 East Walnut Street. I come in last week and did a speech about, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, last meeting. And uh, about the chickens, I have a total of six chickens. And I was seeing if the, account, if the town could change the ordinance because I received a fine for it. I didn't know if you guys had had any, uh, had any time to go over that or think about it or anything. We have. I did a little looking into this and we have actually had a workshop this evening before the meeting. I'll just tell you basically where things stand now as it relates to a, a thing called the zoning or the land use development code mm -hmm. and then also the town codes, okay, just so that yeah. everybody understands where things are at right now, mm -hmm. okay. But concerning the zoning ordinance, Animal, produ Animal Production Limited, which is basically a small-scale operation seemingly to, to fit what you were doing, um, is what's called a special use in your R1 zoning district, okay, your residential one, which means basically community housing, yeah. city streets, things like that. A special use means that you've got to go in front of a planning commission to get approval to do something like that, okay? okay. So that's what, that's what the zoning book says. Okay. On the other hand, you also have the town code of ordinances, okay, and that's a, that's a separate, different book, yeah. and it pertains to more than just the use of property, but just general regulations throughout the town, yeah, right. yeah. and that also does address chickens, okay, mm -hmm. and there is a section in there that discusses noisy animals, and we'll just put that to the side, not even go down that road, and just yeah. assume that they're quite as chickens as ever were, yeah. <laughs> but there's also a provision... There's also a provision that says that you also have to have a minimum of five acres to have chickens on your property within the town limits, okay? Well, so, can, I, well, sorry, can I interrupt you just well, for a second? <laughs> before you do, I'm just gonna say, so we've got those two different, and I'll say they don't mesh very well, and that's also the subject of our workshop, but either way, it's, it's not a permitted use as you sit here today because you've not gotten a special use and even if you went through that process and did get a special use, you've still got the roadblock there of it being that you do not have five acres there within the town. Uh, is there any town property that has five acres? <clears throat> we actually looked at that. There is one parcel of real estate within the corporate limits of the town that is greater than five acres yeah. that having chickens would be a permissible use. 
Can I ask, is it okay to still have pigs? I'm sorry? To still have pigs? Because well, remember, I brought that up the last meeting that- I didn't get into that because you don't yeah. have- No, no, but I was just saying, you know, but there, were, there, land were, use. there were provisions for, I think, the pot belly pigs yeah. or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and again, I can't quote that to your side of you. No, that's fine. But both the just, town code and the land use development or the zoning, or, they're all available <laughs> online. Yeah, you can I've read take the a look at that. And and everything. I didn't read the zoning <laughs> over it. So. But yeah, I just, I find it kind of hypocritical that we can have a hog or a pig, pot belly pig, whatever you want to call it, outside, you know, sticking up the neighborhood and stuff like that. But our clean chickens that are in their pen all day, in their coop at night, that seems, you know, just seems kind of regrettable, that's all. <clears throat> um, have we, I understand the different land use. Is there anything we can do about changing some of those laws? I mean, because that's what really I understood that, you know, when I got the ticket, there was the land use clause, and I understand about the chickens and the town ordinance, but that's why I came here was to try to get us to maybe see if we allow a certain amount of chickens or within city limits plus. You think about it, you know, like I said in the last meeting, other people are going to do it eventually. Other people are going to get chickens. Other people are going to do that. It would be better to step out in front of it beforehand, set some parameters for everybody to abide by, and then allow the police to enforce it rather than just having people get a few chickens and let them run around the town all day or <clears throat> stop a TSC and pick up, you know, two chicks and then let them, you know, stay in their house all day long or whatever it is, you know. It just, that's why I was on there, could we get that changed? And that was the reason I think that the council had this workshop at, at 6 okay. p.m. this evening. Okay. Cool. Um, and they discussed that. And again, that's something that the council did discuss and I'll let whoever wants to address that, address mm -hmm. that. Okay. But I just wanted to let you know currently yeah, where things stand. That's where that's at. Okay, okay. thank you. Sure. So the, the deal, at what point in time, and obviously there's flaws and everything. Yeah. It's like you were saying, the pot belly pigs and whatever. Um, when do we stop? Okay, you come in this week and want chickens, and Luke comes in next week and wants guineas, and uh, he comes in next week and wants turkeys. So every month we're changing, 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 which adds to the police and enforcing <coughs> ordinances that don't need to be. Those are the stipulations people want. I'm not being a smart aleck about this. That's what you live in the country for. I lived in a country, I live in town. I understand that. To you, they're not hurting a thing. They're, they're yours, they're not I'm hurting my neighbors thing. either. Um, but it is against town code right now. Yeah. Or, why don't I get this out of mess up? Yeah. It's both. Can it be changed? It can. Mm -hmm. Not by the council at this time. I go through the planning commission and BZA, correct, Chuck? Planning Commission. Planning Commission. Uh, <clears throat> so with that, like I said, you just keep adding and adding and adding. Where do we stop? I agree with you, but there is a limit. We allow dogs and cats, but we don't allow exotic animals. But yet, I know of probably half a dozen people in town that have pythons in their house. One of them got out the other day and got loose. So I'm just saying, we allow dogs and cats, but then we don't enforce any of the other exotic animals. You know, we allow all these things like that. There's an exception for a We don't know that they're there. We can't enforce it. Yeah, but I want to know. I agree. I agree about that. But still, I'm saying, you know, it actually says in the town ordinance. You want to tell us where those pythons are? Seriously? Yeah, I could give you something, but I'm not snitch. But anyways. I'm ready to take notes. No, I agree. I mean, that's the thing. You know, like that. There, There is a limit. I know you can say, like, oh, how, where do we stop? Well, we stop where it stops. I mean, we make it a judgment call on each case. I mean, that's simple as that. I mean, you know, we can say like, oh, he wants turkeys. Well, turkeys are a lot more dangerous. Where are they living? You know, are they have neighbors right on top of them? You know, how big is the area they're going to do? Like we said, we can set parameters that they have to be in a pen. It has to be this. It has to be that. If the neighbors complain, the police will take care of it. You know, there are limits, you know, we can, yeah, we can keep snowballing before Ellen, you know, somebody might want to count, but obviously that's not going to work, you know. I mean, that's that's all I'm saying. When it comes down to it, there are, there is a limit, you know. So, you know, saying, Does where do we stop? Does that fall the special use? 
Yeah. Permit? Yeah. Okay, then that goes in front of the Planning Commission. Correct. Correct. I was going to say maybe to kind of quicken this up a little bit, the next Planning Commission meeting is August the 2nd. Okay. That will be right here at 7 p.m. Okay. If you want on the agenda, let me know or let Lisa know. We'll have you on the agenda. Okay. We'll Great. Talk about it then. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't intend to make you run through a bunch of hoops, but no, I mean, there's still the guys. There's still the ordinance. There's still the town ordinance that says you got to have five acres. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's this council. Okay? okay. So you can go up here in front of the planning commission, and mm -hmm. even if they said. We'll give you a special use. So you're still kind of butting your head against the wall, okay? So, and again, you're welcome to go there, and that's fine, and we'll discuss it with them. Nothing wrong with that, but it, it does also come back to the council, just so, again, you're clear about this. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I understand, yeah. I would go to the planning commission, talk to them. They give me a special permit, but it's still set for that. So that's what right. I mean, you know, so we've got, like, three different layers here. Two. Two. Well, two there, and then, yeah, the planning commission, I guess, could but anyway, so at least two layers that we would have to get changed, you know. Correct. I mean, I understand it's not that, you know, I know they're just chicks or whatever, but, you know, we start, we make limits on, you know, the dogs as far as their, you know, how much they bark, you know, how much they're, if they're off a leash, you know, there are limits to these things. And I just would think that something small and well taken care of and things like that are, should be something that, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying I'm, you know, poor or anything, but, I don't have enough money to go out and buy a five acre piece of land, you know, but my children and my neighbors and everybody else love having chickens around. So it, it's just something nice, you know, that heck, I had three, three kids over today playing with the chickens. You know, it just, you know, it just seems being Argus, a small town, we should embrace that a little bit more. <clears throat> you know, that would be something that, and like I said, not everybody's going to get them and not everybody's going to get them. Some people that get them aren't going to take care of them. But that's what the regulations are for. That's what you know the police will enforce. You know, so that's where I'm at. Is there? You said about the workshop. Uh, are we going to have another workshop, or how? I mean, like that. If I if I want if I'd like to get this changed, the it takes the council to change an ordinance. Yes. And and I'll just tell you that based on. The discussions at the workshop I don't feel that there was any any consensus that yes we want to change the ordinance to allow that or okay. to change it to allow uh, chickens to be permissible in an R1 district we did talk okay. about um, changing the ordinance so that it is consistent with the zoning ordinance mm -hmm. okay so that those Just two are one compatible and they don't kind of fight each other they're not different so it, it's been directed to me to work on that but there was no direction that basically said, yes, let's allow chickens with some kind of limits, parameters, or yeah. what have you within that R1 district. So you guys have pretty much made the decision. No, I, I don't know if that's necessarily true. I, our biggest concern right now is to get our competing two things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. I don't feel it is prudent as a council to put something in place when we have contradictory policy no, already in place. Yeah, no, and, I, and until I we correct what is contradictory? I am not. I personally am not comfortable moving forward with anything else no. at this time yeah. until we get our ducks in a row. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And it's going to take a while oh, until we get our yeah. chickens in a row. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I figured it. Right? So, yeah. so everything's. You know, you guys are just trying to try to get everything together. Then we'll go from there. Okay. And for the for the record, I have been to your resident. Mm -hmm. I went through the alley and yeah. looked at what I mean. I, I understand exactly what you're talking about, mm -hmm. and but unfortunately, things at this level dealing with these two things in particular yeah. move at a snail's pace. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. I, don't have, I don't have a better answer than that for you. No, right that's now. fine. I, I I understand how things okay. take forever. So I mean, kind of like who in the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. It, you know, it takes a while. I understand. Yeah. So okay. All right. They thank did, you. We didn't forget you, and we didn't throw you off. Okay. We were just thank you. Uh, I'm going to take them too. <laughs> thank you. We're going to milkshake now too. I yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Anyone else? Any other citizen input? Tim, anything from you, sir? Do you want cool air? All right. <laughs> no problem.
Okay, we'll move on. Old business, attorney report. All right, we do have several of these, I'll call them Wednesday buildings, nuisance actions, whatever you want to call them. Um, <clears throat> start with the easy ones first. The first one is the property at 521 North Michigan Street, uh, the Mullaney property. The last meeting, the last meeting said go ahead with the process to get into the house to take a look at things. And after researching Indiana code and the unsafe building order, it's called an inspection warrant. I got everything prepared, ready to go to file in court. You got to get a judge to sign the warrant to allow us to get in the property. When I did that, there's a lot of time constraints. And I said, Chuck, can you come in here and meet with me? Because when we do this, we have certain time constraints. And I didn't want to just file and say, Chuck, here you go. You got 48 hours to do this. But with, so when Chuck comes in, we, we talk about this. And Chuck kind of says, let me have a chance to go and approach her and explain what's coming and see if she would not allow it. I think the council then got an email after Chuck did that uh, where he was allowed access. He's been through that and as I read the email, everything is structurally sound. She has made obviously efforts to take care of the roof. Um, the siding has been repaired and I think there's maybe a couple of issues still with some places in the foundation that need to be blocked up. What happened? There's, there's a couple holes in the foundation. But at the end of the email, Chuck says <coughs> recommend that we close this and that it's it's satisfactory and he no longer has concerns about it being an unsafe building. So we would, I think I'll, Chuck I'll make a motion to close the Mulaney property from the unsafe building uh, process we're going through. Second it. We have a motion and a second to close the uh, inspection and complaints on property on 521 North Michigan, the Mulaney property. Uh, any further comments or anything on this? Doesn't look better. <laughs> if not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Maybe that one's done, Derek. Next one is the McGowan property at 111 South 1st Street. I'm sorry, actually that's his address, but the actual property that he owns is at 711 North Michigan. Chuck was in, we did go over that. It's basically a junk and, and trash situation there on that property. <laughs> So a letter did go out July the 12th. We uh, got 30 days to wait and see if there's any response to ask to that. Nothing to really vote on, just kind of giving you the update. <clears throat> the next one I have is the Beers property at 110 Logan Street. Um, I did get a response from Beers attorney, Mr. Perkins. And that was on Monday. I've kind of been hit and miss and at work this week, but I did forward that to you folks. I don't know if you've seen it, but even since then, um, Lisa informed me, and I don't know if you all have a copy or not, but there is an actual uh, signed estimate basically to begin work on the, on the roof of that property. I don't know, it, it's tough to discern exactly when that work may start, but there certainly is a signed contract. Uh, looks like it was signed just today by the Beers. He, and said, he said that the contractor is probably going to start next Monday. Okay. That was the impression that he got, that it was going to be Monday. And that was basically the gist of the email as well, is that the beers were just trying to find a contractor that could get on this and, and get working with it. Um, so it looks like, again, they are responding and, and getting things taken care of. Uh, Derek, if, if you don't mind, there's multiple issues at that property and everything that we've got and I, I agree they've been responsive on this as far as the um, structural integrity of it but the, as long as go along with that that property in itself is probably worse than the one that we cleaned up over here on Church Street as far as grown up vegetation and you know just stuff that shouldn't be there you know I'm gonna call it rubbish that kind of stuff. And, 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 and I guess I'm going to say this, but when we send a letter, it needs to be all-inclusive and not not piecemeal it and then right. keep adding things down the road. So if there's a problem when we send a letter, which was back in May, we need to address it then. I thought that was in that letter. No. Because Corey's been writing that up for two years for that. That would have been more Corey's jurisdiction than the unsafe. Well, but no, all the same, if there's an issue with a piece of property that we want to see addressed and we're to the point where I'm sending letters, we need to tackle it all at the same point in time so that it, it gets taken care of. Yeah, 
I was in, uh, under the impression that that was a two-piece part there. The structural no, was really clear. It was really only about the roof, and it started back on April the 20th. <coughs> the letter I sent out was May the 10th after the council meeting. Chuck, did you see anything other than the roof? What did you explain? I mean, did you see any other structural damage? And I also get it that maybe in April there wasn't a lot of vegetation to be grown up at that point in time in the, in the year. Um, but I know that our letter addressed only the conditions on the roof. And I mean, we got, or I, I shouldn't say we, but I mean, I have all the pictures concerning that. And that's what we see are tarps on the roof. I mean, yeah, I agree. I, I agree with all that. And that looks like April. You got daffodils blooming. Right now it looks like a woods and a house in the middle of it. Yeah, it is. And I, I looked through the police records for at least two years. Corey has wrote that up and sent in multiple letters about the vegetation. And that's why I thought that was all part of this. And my bad for not understanding what exactly was going out there on that. But, um, May I speak? There's still a lot of trees to be cut down <coughs> in that property. And they do have holes in the floor, if you don't know that. Because a year ago, there was a guy come from Plymouth to uh, spray for bugs. And he showed me the pictures inside, and it wasn't pleasant. And this summer, I was sitting out on my deck, and there's a big old rat come in the yard. And I know where it come from. So, you might fix the roof, but you ain't gonna fix the problem. Well, we did We did address the cat situation. We had- Yeah, we got more cats coming. I get it, but so does in every neighborhood in Nargis. Just ask them all. Well, but, I, got yeah. them too, I got them too, Lou. So, I know, I, I'm just that. telling you, we addressed the ones that she said she was feeding. She knows she can only keep three cats and she knows that she has to keep them up on shots and everything like that. She I have, that. <laughs> I understand, but she knows that, and we right. did address it. And she did have some farmer come in and get a whole bunch of them, is what her husband told me. So, and then I even had a neighbor say that yes, he can verify that they did take a lot of those they cats away. Yeah. Okay, so we did. Well, but I can't stop the cats from coming back. I know back, that. You know what I mean? So, I, I mean, that. I can't stop the cats at my house. So, no, I realize um, that. But I'm, I'm just saying, yeah. you can solve one problem, yeah. and you're creating another one. If you go get in that house and look at the floor and stuff, they do have a handicapped adult in there. So you called the adult services and they called me and they said that um, they would go down and check it out. I have not heard what they, they you, know, tell you. you know, what they did. They did call me and ask me if there was an adult handicapped sure. person in there and I said yes. And, you know, they said that they would look into it, but I have not heard from them. So, well, like I said, you can, you can fix the roof all you want. But you got the other problem in back, and you got the house that you got holes in them, so you have to face that eventually. So you know, my opinion, that house is a dump for the whole neighborhood. I don't care what you say or what you do; it's still a dump. My house is clean, so if they can't fix it, the roof ain't gonna take care of it. No. I'll tell you what, Mr. Barroff, there is a thing called a, a private nuisance action in the state of Indiana, and you can pursue that if you wish to do it. I'll do that. Okay. There you go. Give me the address and telephone number. For what? How do you do that? You, yeah, you have to file it in court. Yeah, it's something you probably either need to get an attorney to help <laughs> you out do that or, or do it on your own, but that's up to you. But it's going to cost me money. Right. What am I going to get out of it? Well, your satisfaction of taking care of the property the way you want it taken care of. In the meantime, the town has an issue to address about the roof right. that we tackled. And so we need to basically decide what we're going to do here with 110 Logan Street. 
See, I offered to buy the house. Somebody. In the wintertime. Well, he, his comment said, I have to ask my wife. And then he got another house across Mason Street. They put all the stuff inside the house in it. And when they had that bad weather, a big limb fell on the roof. So that's where that stands. So, you know, you can fix the roof all you want, but it ain't going to help the house. So, you know. <laughs> what are we going to do, yeah. So what are we going to do with the roofing, you guys? The what? The roof. Are you going to wait until the work is done? Because they already had, they already had seven people look at the roof and give them an estimate. Yeah. Right. I right. think they've got scheduled work. I yeah. think we just let them go ahead and free yeah. do the work. Right, right now we're going to, we're not going to stop this or drop it. We're going to table it till the work is done. But what that they've got uh, this contractor lined up to do. Okay. And then we'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll go from there and see what else then uh, we might need to look into. I appreciate it. Okay, Randy. Yeah. Um, if it pleases the board, I could get with Corey again and do like we did with the Church Street property, um, and I could go with Corey go take pictures of the outside. We could start that process of writing the letter down again. Um, from Corey first, we gotta go through all that process from square one again. But we're gonna go down that road to that property. I, mean, I agree with Lou. It, it, it's terrible. It is so, terrible. So Lou, here, here, here's. And I understand the lack of patience. I'm a very impatient person about things, too. But anyhow, it's going to take us a little while. That's fine. So you do I got know patience. That, you, do know, extent. you do know that we're working on it. Yeah. You know we're trying. And we're not, we're, we've are not. we got one problem that we have to take I care of. That, that was addressed. And so do we find out what that's doing? We can't do anything. But what Sean says, we can have, we can start a... Separate. Uh, Basically, group. start with square one. Yeah, and, and get pictures taken and, and everything, and get right. things prepared. Be fine. To, so, but it's again, it's, it's not going to happen overnight. Oh, I know that. Okay. But All like right. I said, it just it just makes my house look. Terrible. I know. I know. I drive down that road in the morning every morning. Because I'm I'm right next to it, and I can see yeah. what yeah. what the sand peak going on. My wife don't like it. She wants to move away. I said, no, we ain't moving away. Well, good for you. Stay right where you're at. Give us a yeah. give us some yeah. time, sir. Because okay. yeah. well, she had her way, we'd be moving. Council, council wish for me to go ahead with that process. Uh, so here, hang on just a second. Go ahead. I make a motion to table um, the roofing for the Beers House um, to get them, you know, since it's already go. To get them ready to go. We have a motion to table the. Uh, Anything being done at the Beers House till we hear back uh, from the contractor about the roofing problem? And do you want to add anything on to that motion? Or? I don't know if it should be a separate motion or not, but I, I would okay. be willing to get with Corey to start the process okay. of the overgrown vegetation. We'll do that as a separate motion. Yes, yeah. sir. So we're one again. So. So, so, so we have a motion and a second to table it till the roof is done, and we'll see what goes from there. Any further comment? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Sean, you have another motion? Uh, I'll make a motion that to uh, allow me to get with Chief Bowman and go take pictures of the overgrown vegetation on the property at Logan Street, uh, owned by Mr. Beers, and start that process again of a letter from the code enforcement. And we'll just start now. We know where it's going to head eventually, but we've got to start again with that. So. Um, and all along that step, we'll forge up to Derek so as he can keep that okay. in sequence. Uh, if you're going to take pictures, take pictures of the front, the side, west side, east side. I've been down this road before, okay. Lou. Right. No, we, we, we know, sir. All right. I as well. We have a motion. Do we have a second on this? Second we have a motion and a second to start uh, the process of taking pictures, uh, having the chief of police go down there and look at it also. And we will take all the sides everywhere that okay. Okay, on the property, okay? That'd be fine. So with the motion and a second, is there any further comment on any of that? 
not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? There you are, sir. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Back to attorney reports. I got a uh, nineteen. We also got property at 304 East Plum Street. This was Virgin of Vila. Um, the last meeting we had, we were going to table that. Um, this was one I think that Chuck had had some face to face contact with them. They may have been working on some things, but we did. Chuck wasn't here at the last meeting, so we weren't really sure where things stood with that property. Oh. Yeah, she was cleaning it tonight. We discussed that. She was out there pulling the wings from the body. Tonight? No, no, no. Oh. The night we talked about it, and Chuck texted her that day. They were out there cleaning stuff up. And it, yeah, it may have been text, maybe not face to face. I mean, it's I don't know, right? From the last meeting, we tailed that till we could get an update from Chuck. Right. So, you ready for that? It's an old trailer. No matter how you look at it, it's an old trailer. Uh, she did go out and fix the skirting around the bottom of it, brought that back together, got that uh, pretty well fixed. The porch, uh, where it was concerned with the uh, bad spots, got that reinforced and that's solid now. Um, I think she's brought it up as good as she's gonna be able to get it done. You know, if you want to have an ordinance that says you can't have a mobile home that's X number of years old, then we could do something. Other than that, I don't know if we're going to be able to get anything done on that. George, do you remember, wasn't there an ordinance passed a few years ago about if a trailer... If they're remodeling it, they can't remodel. Right, but after a certain date, they couldn't. They couldn't set a, a new one in. They can't. If they pull a trailer out, there cannot be another trailer put in. Right. Well, well, never, never, it never. The uh, only way they can do that is if if it's a hardship case and they're moving something in for a parent or a, you know take care of somebody, and that's a yearly review. But it was never discussed at the time of how old the trailer. Like some of them, you know. No. I'm almost positive we didn't put an age limit. If it's there, it's there until it's It's there until it rots away, yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess, folks, what, again, what what was directed for her to take care it's of? Was taken care of. Was a fence. There was broken pieces laying around the yard that needed to be taken care of and repaired. There was skirting that needed to be replaced on the mobile home. There was a broken out and boarded up window. And the porch railing and decking was either rotting or falling down. And that's what was mm -hmm. requested to be taken care of in the letter. And she's gotten all those taken care of. It's done. Okay. It's minimum. It's not what you would do at your house. Not what I would do. But it meets what we ask her to do. Motion to close the property on 3 or 4 East Plum Street for the... Foundation and the porch railings and general disrepair that has been repaired at that address. Second. We have a motion and a second to go ahead and close the property at 304 East Plum Street for the, the property violations have been taken care of. Any further discussion on any of this? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Two more. The next one and I saved the ones that I have conflicts on for last, so I'm kind of reporting this uh, from what I'm informed. But last time on the Argus Enterprises LLC property at 413 Southwest Street, the order uh, was signed. I sent that back to the attorney, Carmen Post, and so that the order's been signed. Go ahead and I think it could serve to them, but they have 60 days from when that occurs, so we're we're looking at probably early to mid-September before that deadline would come and go. So again, I'm just letting you know that um, we got that kicked out and we just kind of we'll kind of wait and see what happens around about that time frame, okay? The next one was property at 193 South Michigan Street, owned by Shelley Marciliano. This was one that 
we got to go back to the meeting we had on June 15th. Um, we did not get service on a letter. Chuck talked about that he would be able to hand deliver the letter or <coughs> talk with her about that. Uh, the next meeting, which was July the 6th, uh, Chuck wasn't at that meeting, so we just tabled it. And so here we are, and I don't, I don't know where that one's at either. Um, she's been doing some work on it, um, but that's about all I can tell you right now. I didn't go by there today to take pictures or anything. Uh, Does she? Was she notified though? Does she have a letter? Yes. She does. Yeah, we send that regular mail. Oh. And then we posted one on the door. Okay. Was there a time limit on that letter to have this stuff done? Is it? Probably is that 30 days, I'm pretty 30 sure. Days. Someone's 30 days? The roof on that porch. Not any more than that. Oh, really? <laughs> so they were up there building, and there was no building permit pulled for that. And so. Um, as far as I know, Steve Howard, the building commissioner, did shut that down and, I, until they get a building permit. And registered contractors. Yes. I called him on that and had him come down let him do what he's supposed to do. Okay. So he put a stop work order on that until they got a permit to do all the, all the repairs in the room mm -hmm. and register contractors. Derek, does that letter add 30 days? I mean, what, what are our options, Derek? Well, this is a obviously we're getting up against that 30 days. Well, it could be, but this is an informal letter. Okay, we're not into the okay. statutory timelines of the unsafe building ordinance or the Indiana statutes that deal with the unsafe buildings. So this is kind of the warning shot across the bow, if you will, that hey, get something taken care of here. Um, or we're going to have to go through the process, just like Argus Enterprises. Okay, in that in that case, an order was prepared, it was signed by the council, and that's being served, and then that is a firm timeline. If and that can be even extended or amended as well. But you're you're starting into that process. If if that doesn't correct the problem, then the next step is take the matter to the courts. We're we're earlier in the game here with this property at 193 South Michigan Street. We have a letter, and if there's some response um, and it looks positive, um, I think you know obviously communication would be good to say council meeting we discuss things. But if there's progress, keep it moving. I'll make a motion to table this one at this time for 30 days. At that time, I'd like to have an update from Chuck on progress and what's going on down there before we proceed any further. Second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to table the uh, property at 193 South Michigan Street for 30 days. And then at the end of that, we would like to see what uh, Chuck DeWitt has uh, found out on all this property. Any further comment? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Those. That was it. That's all the properties and that's all that I had to report. Yep. Can I make a motion to approve the attorney report? Second. Motion and second to accept the attorney report. Any further comment on that? If not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Other old business. Anybody else got anything that we need to go back and hash around? No? I have one. Go ahead. Um, and, our, and in December of every year, we have an employee appreciation dinner. Um, it's been tossed around a few times about having it different places. We've always liked it at Christo's, only because it's big enough. They have we can hire a bartender um, for the you know. Um, we did not reserve a space because people were like, oh, we should have it here, we should have it there. So I would like you guys to make a decision on the employee appreciation dinner for this year because we normally have it the first Friday in December um, just so that, you know, things start getting hectic towards the holidays and stuff like that. So, so is there a decision on the date or the location? Um, both. 
Is, is there a place, obviously I'd like to keep it in town if we could, but my question is, is there a place in town that can accommodate the type of dinner that we have there equally or better than what we already have? I mean, I, I question whether in town, if there's a place that can accommodate that many people. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We a community building could yeah. accommodate it. If yes. they're not busy, if they're not booked, we can check at the gallery on West, but they do not have a bar or a bartender. I'm not BYOB. saying that if, huh? BYOB. Yeah, right, no. Um, but yeah. you can handle all that? I know a bartender that would do it. Okay. Well, so you, have you would have to check their restrictions at the fairgrounds. I don't know what they are. And, you know, um, if, if that's something you want to look into and table this till next meeting, that's fine. But we do need to make a decision because things do book up and then we will have no place to go. So. In the basement? <laughs> oh, you know? I have a patio deck. <laughs> there you go. In December. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's just something that we normally do. So I think we, we really need to know what we want to do this year. Everybody says they want to keep it in town, but nobody can come up with a good enough venue. We've tried it um, when it was Jay's. It's just very tight, cramped. Mm -hmm. You can't move around. Um, you can't talk amongst each other, and you definitely you know, feel very cramped. Um, Log House sometimes rents theirs out. I don't know if that's an option. Um, and for a private party, I don't know how much that would be. So, huh? Oh yeah, and then they are open on Friday night, so that's during regular business yeah. hours. So, they would, you know, either one of them have would like to cater it if we had it somewhere else. But um, I don't know if the Legion would, you know, if that's something that you want to try. Um, they do have a bar, but I, I don't know what their rules are for serving, you know, uh, outside yet people that are not members, so. Gallery of the West would probably be our best. This is just my follow on this. And like George says, we can get a bartender. There are two or three people in town that we can get to cater the meal. Um, okay, but who's going to buy the food? I would. I got a question, Randy. Before we go to, uh, I got a question. Uh, I think I agree with you in one instance, but I think we need to see what the total cost of doing that there versus where we've been going. Well, yeah, I'm just place saying if we decide to do it in town, that's you yeah. Know, we're, I agree. We're with limited you. on the choices. Um, we we know what um, Christos is going to be because you can make a phone call and he pretty much yeah. tell you. Talk about hiring a separate bartender or anything else. You're gonna. Yeah, I, you're I gonna have think to, this is gonna be higher. You're gonna have to buy uh, whatever it is you, you, the alcohol you want. You're gonna have to buy it. Someone's gonna have to pay for that. Uh, I so mean, you can have a dry one. We could. We could, we, we, we could have whatever people want. And that's I, it. I think we do need to look into uh, prices. So, like Sean, I think I'd like to to see if uh, the council comes to an agreement to table this to uh, next meeting, because we're going to be uh, August, September. We usually have it booked by now, but yeah. everybody wanted to... Well, if, if we don't get it done first of August, we're going to, might run against a lot of problems. Um, things fill up fast. So I think we need to table this maybe to next meeting and come back with uh, some prices on the rental of the uh, gallery, the rental of what crystals would cost us. George needs to let us know about a bartender and maybe a rough, uh, like a ballpark figure of alcohol and stuff, you know, I don't know, two or three thousand dollars. Yeah. You know, I don't know what it would take. It would take care of me and Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I, I don't think that even, that was two or three thousand just on alcohol. That wasn't the whole thing. Last year. <laughs> well, see, I don't know because I didn't. You can find a bartender, but yeah, you're going to pay him like every alcohol drinks in the Well, you know, again, we'll check and see. That's just I don't, that's I don't buy it anything larger than gallons, so I. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. Uh, 
Okay. So anyhow, let's, let's go ahead. Somebody, uh, let's let's get a motion on this and get this rolling. Oh, I, don't, I think if you just table it, you can table it. Okay. So let's just table that to next month, and then uh, we need to have some definites on it times and dates and find out. I mean, I can find out if the gallery on West is available, but right. she's not going to hold it if we're not going right. to do it. Well, so, just, yeah. You know. I mean, Jamie can call because they love him, so. He can turn off the <laughs> You know. He'll just ask All right. All right. Jamie's only been here five minutes. You're already picking up. <laughs> Let's try All to get right. through this. That's what happens when you show up late. <laughs> Resolution. 2022-10, the power tracker. Make the motion we pass resolution 2022-10, power tracker. Yes. Second. Do we have a motion and a second to pass resolution 2022-10, the power tracker. Any further comments? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Power tracker passed. We'll ordinance. We have an ordinance. 2022-09, this is utility connections. Explain, please. <laughs> Explain, please. Somebody, Derek, you want to do this, or Lisa? Who knows most of my guys? Take this to Lisa. Uh, okay, so everybody knows that based on our water rates, um, the water rate studies that we get done every so often, and the electric rate studies that we get done, um, our rates are based on the total number of connections that we have. Um, if they go up because we have people that put in new homes and you know, then our rates are adjusted accordingly. Um, we have a few properties in town that um, are not connected. Not very many, but are not connected and we definitely have a disconnect on um, the rental properties uh, not all of them we have great landlords most of them um, but some of them um, we don't get the feedback from some of the landlords like we do others um, and then we end up with months of no minimums Payments. The minimums basically are what our rates are based off of. So um, we came up, we contacted several other towns to find out what they do. And then based on their ordinances, we have created an ordinance that um, would make it so that even if you have your utilities disconnected, you would still pay the minimum amount. Um, if that is, if a renter comes in, I, I clarified this with Derek today, if a renter comes in and they sign a contract with us, then we are under contract with that renter, not with the property owner, with the renter. If they fail to sign a disconnect, then we charge them the minimums until we hear otherwise. Either a new renter comes in and, you know, or um, a property owner informs us that they have moved out. Um, we have a lot that just skip and don't sign those disconnects. So our contract at that point is with them. They would be charged minimums until we hear further from the property owner. So it's not always just automatically flip to the property owner you know um, but based on that it also eliminates the snowbird ordinance which would allow people that have dual houses um, not to pay the sewer during that time so just so that you know what you're voting on okay now let's say I have a house and I have renters in it that are up to par with their bill mm -hmm. and they move out. Yeah. And I say I want my utility shut off. Mm -hmm. Water, sewer, electric. And it sits there for three months. Do it I? Be, it what? cannot be disconnected. 
So you can you can tell us or you um, okay, can I want the water off. I want the water sewer and electric shut off you because can there's have nobody living in there, but I'm still paying that minimum. You you pay the minimum. Okay. Which is what, 100, 110 a month? It's less I think it's ninety something. So it you know so did the in that instance, say it was a snowbird that goes to Florida in the winter because they got a house down there and they come back here in the summer and they ask the guys to shut off their water. By the way, so what what do they actually get charged? The minimum for the water or the sewer? Both. Both. Okay, that's I want to make sure I'm reading this one. Is there a minimum on the electric then or no? No. No. I just yes, want to make sure there's one paragraph kind of confused me a little bit, and I want to make sure. But they is. they don't they don't turn their electric off. I know, but they I didn't know there was a minimum on electric. I thought it was only on meter. No, it, there's a minimum on okay. electric, water, sewer, um, trash. We can cut off. You know, uh, we have an agreement with the Republic that we can say if you don't want to pay the trash, we we can have them come get the cans, and you know, they don't like to just. So come the snowbirds are going to pay you ninety dollars a month. For the water and sewer, basically. Mm -hmm. for the no, for water, minimum. sewer, electric, and stormwater, hydrant maintenance. Right. All of that stuff is based on the residents that we have in town. Okay. I mean, all of our ordinances were based upon how many connections we have in town. Yeah, I know. You heard it during the um, rate studies mm -hmm. explained. I I mean, is there any other questions that you have about this? I mean, do you, you, Jamie said that he talked to you. Do you have any comments? I mentioned it. It's been months since I mentioned it to Mark. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a scary thing for me. But you, I mean... In looking back, I had, you know, Candy kind of look back at what you do, you know, out at the, at the mobile home park. And normally if somebody moves out and we call you or email you, you're like, yeah, turn it on in our name for now, you know, because we need to go in and clean it up. We need to, you know, fix it for the next runner. And then you normally fill yours very quickly. Right. You know. Some, most of the time. Yeah. No, sometimes somebody sits for you know, so, I mean, it, you know, I'm sure that if you have somebody that comes in and damages your property severely that, you know, you would need extra work on those, but, um, you know. Or it might take three months to evict them. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then fix it. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, if they're not evicted, though. And the, still, and, the, and, the, and the utilities get shut off. Right. It, it still stays in their name. If they're not out, do you see what I'm saying? If they are still living there, okay. then we have a contract with them at that time. Does that make sense? So we they have, still oh, accrue sorry, the sorry. minimums. I got a ten Keep going. I'm sorry. They they would still accrue the minimums. Mm -hmm. So if they get shut off on the 29th of the month, we normally tell you that day, the next day, hey, we have a renter that right. did not pay, right. you know? And they would still accrue the minimums during the time, you know, if they don't have it turned on, what's the most you've had, like a month and a half, maybe? For, for that they've been out? Yeah, like yeah. off, you know? I think we had one like five months or something. Did you have one five months? Yeah, it was, a, it was an ugly one. situation. Okay, yeah. so maximum of five months, but you would not, you, you're you still on the hook for the sewer no matter what, if they mm -hmm. have it on or not have it's it on. It's a state ordinance. It's yeah. a state ordinance. Yeah. But in this case, that you would let me know, hey, they're still living there. Right. You know what I mean? So we still have a contract, right, with that renter, mm -hmm. not with you. But if you call us up and say, hey, they're moved out, but we need the power and stuff to fix the trailer, then it would go into your name. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Does that if, make if they knew they were going to not have a tenant in there for like a year, what would they need to do? 
if they knew that they was not going to be used. Then I would say they would need to come to the council. Well, I thought there was something in there about digging it up and actually cutting okay. it off yeah. in the town. And, and, yeah. Yes, there is. Um, There's a time limit. So if you're not going to have the utilities onto the property at all, I think we have a 60-day from time of notification that you would have to disconnect the utilities totally, the sewer, the water, the electric, all of that. Because the house is, it's 30 days. you know, at it's that point inhabited. it's considered vacant. Uninhabited. I would think in their case, or yeah, in their specific case. case, in their specific case, they could come to the council meeting like they're very good about doing and saying, "Hey, we got this situation. You know, we don't want it necessarily permanently, but we want to completely rehab this home or whatever that they're doing in that place." And the council can probably make some kind of an adjustment there. So what she's saying is, I'm going to use the trader down there. We're talking about. They would be paying 100. They would be paying the minimum for every month that that house sits empty until that 30 days and then we can go in and take the sewer and all that stuff out and disconnect it at their expense and then their expense to put it all back in again. It gets to be a very, the whole thing is based on, I'm going to use the word slumlords or people that don't care what their properties look like and fall apart. This is a way to make them get into their pocketbook and either do something about it or, right. It's costing them money. Yeah. Because there again, I've said this for 16 years. The only time you get people to open their eyes and look is when you get into their billfold. <laughs> Otherwise, they sit there. But that is part of that. that I is, know. I know. But it will help with that. That is not the reason this is made. That is, is made. not the reason. The reason is is that it, if we have a rate study done on our water rates and we have 800 homes that are supposed to be contributing to that rate study, and we have 20 of them that are shut off. If we have uh, 50 of them that I are shut off, I understand that, but that is going then to just the alleviate me, that problem. The people that are still paying, well, now we are paying their share also. But what we'll do is we'll help alleviate that problem that I just talked about. It might, I mean, mm -hmm. that might be the back end of it, but mm -hmm. that was not. That the, was not the sole purpose of it. That was but not. Somebody the, like Mark and I, or somebody that owns properties, that's automatically where it goes into our minor process. That that's what happens. I know that's not what we're. I'm I'm all for it. I mean, it doesn't not, affect me that much. Right. You know. I did the research with all the other towns. I pulled Bremen's ordinance. I pulled Bourbon's ordinance. I pulled Carl Culver's ordinance and Plymouth. None of them allow for disconnection. Now. Not all of them have electric, you know, so, but the electric ordinance already has it in it. To this day, we should have been following it. This is just, it just makes it even for all the utilities. It makes every resident in Argus responsible for their own portion. That's what it does. <laughs> I'm okay with the gist of it, the guts of it. I just, my concern, I don't want to penalize Mark for doing something because he's done so much out there. I don't want him to get penalized for some reason. I don't think I'm looking to penalize Or accrue ex extra cost that he doesn't need um, without some way for him to come to the council well, and we can make a decision so on that. This, this is not for people that are following the rules and the regulations. This is for the ones that aren't. It's actually for the rates. It's not right. in mean, there. I, should have, I guess I should have never mentioned that. Yeah. We don't have debt, so it doesn't yeah. really. Your rates normally are because of debt. So, but, but what it does do. So, so the thought of this originally, I'm, I'm going to use the main one that you'll see this with NIPSCO. You have NIPSCO gas. There's no way to get out of paying a NIPSCO bill right. unless you retire your service. Yeah. You can shut them off and they will shut it off, but they will send you a bill and you have to pay it. I, I shut them off all the time. They won't do it. I've got a bill. They won't let you shut them off. They told us we had to disconnect them and retire them. You'll pay the minimums up to that Maybe point. Maybe on a commercial property. So, so this was the only thing that, that I know they do. But most places, like she's saying, the reason they have this is because they have debt to service. No. We're kind of different because we don't, but... The way it was explained to me is the utilities have maintenance costs. 
okay? General maintenance costs. And everybody on their bill pays towards that general maintenance. You know, they pay for the linemen and the, you know, the general maintenance of all of the utilities. That's what it's for. It's to make sure that every home in Argus contributes the fair amount to the general maintenance of the utilities that are provided. Can I speak for a second? Okay, so two things. One, I'm okay with, as long as I have an avenue, I'll give you an example. Um, we retire a home, try to get rid of it. We put in orders for homes back in August of last year that are not even supposed to be delivered until November of this year. So I would be paying, even though I have no home, there was a home there. We took the home out. I'd be paying for utilities on for a vacant lot for that. So you know, if, the, if I had an opportunity to say this is a special situation, that'd be well, fine. In that situation, what they said, you actually yeah. what we call retired the service. You retired. You the disconnected service. it. You took it out. Yeah. You disconnected it, so you would not get charged a minimum. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's a rate. That's oh, okay. that's like if somebody yeah, but he tore wouldn't their want to dig it up and tap the main. No, no. Well, he wouldn't have to dig. Okay. No, he, right. He's capping it off. The yeah. They pull the trailer out or right. unit out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They can cap it at that point. Okay. Yeah. If there's no yeah. unit, there, if there's no unit, that. if there's no house on a property, we just you know require that they dig up their sewer line now, on their side. You do a different thing because you right. have connections that are out in the open. But as long as they retire that service, you know what I mean. Then mm -hmm. there's no. Okay. And then on the other aspect, of, from just as a NIPSCO, we can shut NIPSCO off at any home that if somebody's left, it just they charge us if we get it turned back on within nine months. Oh, I've never had that one. Now the other person, if a new name. person moves into that, they'll allow them to hook up without any fees. Mm -hmm. But as if we if we do it, yeah. Yeah. This I don't think this was designed to hurt anybody. It was actually to make it fair for everybody. Right. It wasn't designed to, yeah. you know, we aren't picking on people, we're not, you know, that is not the goal. No, and, and I knew that, Lisa. Don't, don't take that. I mean, don't I, take I my just comment don't want wrong. you to I just, step here and say that I'm doing They know. have a unique situation out there, right. and I, I wanted that. to make sure that you know, they weren't going to be unnecessarily or unfairly have to do extra work that they shouldn't have to do. Right. Just because of, like he said, you know, he's got homes he's got on order since last August hadn't got him yet. I mean, that's not his fault. But he should, you know, I just want to make sure that everything's on the up and up and that they have an avenue to communicate with us and let, you know. Absolutely. Up. Anybody can come. I mean, that's on our utility bills and everything. You can come to a utility hearing. You can, you can talk to the town council who is a deciding factor for all the town utilities. You know, you have an avenue. You just got to be careful that you don't create. Yeah you know, an, an exception that other people will be like, well, you did it for this, and you, you know what I mean? So you just have to be careful. No, the only one I was concerned about was that unique situation. And, and we are more than willing to work. I think we've communicated that, yeah. you know, so. We communicate very well. Yeah, we're not trying to, you know, hurt anybody. It's just to make every, sure that everybody pays their fair share towards the maintenance of the utilities that they're offered i make a motion to suspend the rules second we have a motion and a second to suspend the rules any further comment not if not all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed i make a motion to pass ordinance 2022-09 utility connection to all three readings second we have a motion and a second to pass ordinance 2022-09 on all three readings. Any further comment? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nothing. My ears aren't going to be laying here. <laughs> oh, yeah. When snowbirds come in, we're in trouble. We'll trade houses. Moving on. We'll trade houses. No. Colin Barrow from Maple Grove. So, real quick, I sent you an email telling you how much this thing is. That's just to have the colum columbarium. We might need some help paying for the concrete under it, but the cemetery could definitely, the perpetual care or the foundations could definitely handle 
purchasing the columbarium for around 30,000 for 48 spots. Um, I do think that somebody should help us figure out where to put it, you know, maybe George, because he likes the cemetery so much. And, <laughs> and um, you know, just kind of, Alan Earl is really good at helping us out with the cemetery, so he'll probably come out there too, but this is just to purchase the columbarium. We're gonna have to figure out the concrete. George is pretty good at that. So, so um, it's up to you if you wanna spend the money, but the price that's on there is only the price per unit. Now, you've got to realize that they won't have to buy a headstone, so you're going to add a little bit to that for perpetual care and stuff like that. So that's just to buy the unit, and then you're going to have some that you have to add for perpetual care to maintain the unit, if that makes sense, per square. Yes. But you're going to have less cost than buying a grave space and buying the headstone and you know and then on our part it'd be in the long run kind of cheaper for us because we won't have to pour the footings all the time so, well i'm one? not saying that but um cremations have become more popular mm -hmm. and you can put two cremains in each niche and then you have they would have to pay for the um, marble to be etched with whatever right. they want on it um, but you they're like two by two squares or something like that and they're held in with little bolts a lot of times the um, funeral director can you know you may not have the cost of opening and closing yeah. a grave because the funeral directors can do that so it's it's an option people are looking for a way to put something to put cremains in above ground that instead of buying a grave space and putting it on there. Huh? You're running on a property. Well that too, but I that's mean that, well yeah, that's causing a lot of this because you can like you said, if forty eight of them. Forty eight times two. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so so that's a whole lot less property than if we would put I mean, you can have single ones or you can have two in one, yeah. so. Well, look at it this way. You got, you know, it's, it's a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. Even if they pay, if they would pay $1,000 per niche, it's still cheaper than buying yes. two right. property and, 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 and yeah. headstone. Yeah. 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 I, I, moved, I moved to purchase the 24 niche double-sided Colibarum for the cemetery, price of twenty nine thousand oh seventy four. Okay, so we have that's two mm -hmm. twenty four. Purchase one twenty four niche double sided. So forty eight space. Forty eight space for twenty nine thousand oh seventy four. Okay, so we have a motion to purchase one. That's them set the two, right? Yeah, it, and, yeah, yeah but we have to have the concrete. We just have to have the concrete. I understand, I'll just deal with this. Yeah, 124 niche double sided, which is 48 spaces, uh, for 29,074. We have a motion and a, and a second. Any further comment? <coughs> Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? For the record, that is the best utilization of funds compared to the other quote for a 12 niche double sided at $22,834. So we're getting the cost per niche reduced significantly by going with the larger Colorado. Yes. yes. Okay, other new business, anything else new? Mark, you have anything new? No, not yet. Not yet? <laughs> Alright, department head reports. You want me out on speed? Please. We don't. Uh, or he gave you his report. Yeah. So we we've seen his reports. He turned them in. <clears throat> Utilities. Um, just a couple things. Um, 
putting stone in the road out of deer field that's going pretty good we still got a couple tabs to put in on the first section but basically we're ready for houses out there now um, still waiting on NIPSCO to figure out what they're going to do with that line but other than that it's we're pretty much ready and then um, the wastewater in his report he had a couple things he mentioned in there um, when we haul sludge that price has really increased because of fuel and everything else so He's looking at another option where um, we'd haul in a dumpster with a bag, they call it a bag system or something, fill that up and haul it off. So we're going to try that, see what kind of pricing it is and see if it works all right. And if it does, we think there's a cost saving, pretty good cost savings with that. So um, we're just going to try it, yeah. Um, he's got a couple things in here about the anchor bolts and the lift stations have rusted off. They use steel instead of stainless, so we're going to be changing all those out soon. And then um, where the main lift station pumps to the sewer plant, he wants to do a chemical clean on that. I guess it's like a three-step process. Put it in, clean it down. It should get it back open. You know, it collects grease and stuff. That pipe is probably shrunk down over time. So that's something else we're going to be working on. I don't think any of it's real expensive. It's just something you're going to do. So. We're going to have to do that to Every year. Yeah, yeah, it's probably similar to that. Yeah, it's kind of hard. yeah, if that's if that's what if that's what they recommend down there, I'd go, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm real happy with those guys running the sewer plant. Exactly, it's the cheapest yeah. thing we got. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. Yep. Yeah. Economic director. But now, one more time. <laughs> No, it's month two. I'll get you one. Uh, as you can see or heard, Evan Marsh is doing surveying for the sidewalk project, the downtown square. Hopefully, will be done by the end of this month. I got the irrigation completed today. Uh, trees are supposed to go in this week. Uh, that will be planted to grass, which will be okay. I know I asked you, we talked about that, but since it's all irrigated, it'll all be irrigated, so they will plant grass. Be the good time to plant it stuff, or? Uh, I'm not sure what it will be. We'll have to, I've got a meeting in the morning for an update, so we'll go from there. Uh, we kind of had a hang up on an end dot issue. Uh, they finally got back to us and virtually just told us we we broke it, we had to fix it. So, tells you what end dot. But, uh, so that should be done sometime here. Like I said, we're, I, August 1st, I'm not telling you that you'll walk up there and it'll be 100%, but it'll at least be in a usable state, hopefully. So if it's different, we'll let you know. When do we do a final inspection? Once it's 100% completed and the, and the builder says it's 100% completed. Now, so at that inspection, obviously, <laughs> Shannon will be the main one there. And Mike will be there. Well, I, I'd all like of you. Here. I'd like to be there. <laughs> yeah. So we'll have to do the walkthrough. Shannon will have all the grant information that we'll obviously need to close out. And Mike, being the project manager, will have his things he's got. So if there's something you see ahead of time, by all means ask so we can either make sure that it's an issue or let you know how it's not an issue. I'm just, I'm just you mentioned that grass, and I'm concerned if they go out there and just throw grass seed on the top and then irrigate it. Going into August and September, the hot months, it's not oh, going I, to do, I don't know what it actually. It's not going to do as good as the hydroponic seeding or whatever they yeah. do with the sprayer. Not sure what? You know what I'm talking about, Jamie? What they call it? We that? can ask Mike tomorrow. We got a meeting with him. Yeah. Okay. Hydro seed. Yeah, hydro seed. Because I'm not sure how they bid that. It'll all be in that bid spec, so we can make sure we get something. But it just I know, I know going in August and September time, grass does not do yeah. well. Grow. I think we ought to go to sometime before we even think it's going to be done and kind of looking over ourselves and if you don't mind you and I and Chuck would like to do it it doesn't matter uh, you know just we all got ways of looking at things and, and kind of looking over so that yeah. we're not going to have no surprises then when we do the finals is that fair enough yep okay uh, I got with Derek this last week we're going to work on getting the stuff around so we can transfer the properties up there to the park department two out of the four or two out of the five are there so we have to transfer the other three uh, he's also working on, why we're on there, we're working on Deerfield, trying to get that all mixed right so we can get rid of those lots. 
So we've obviously had a builder or two interested. We had another one come online that we're trying to work with. So we're, we're working on that. That's really where we are today. So I've got some other things, but we're not quite there yet. So. And if you haven't been around, uh, there's two new houses. There's one right down here uh, he's on Gigger Street. He's yeah. got Geert Street. He's got the uh, crawl space, the foundation floor. He's got the Alabama Dirt going to be starting pretty soon. Westview Court, uh, there's a new home there. It was a um, modular, it's, it's a Rochester home. But uh, it's all set up and they finished the roof, so they're working on getting that together. So we have two new homes uh, pretty much done in the town. But they end up doing, wasn't there a tile in the liner of pipe or something on that one? We got it moved. You got it moved? Okay. okay. Yeah. So you do have access? You, I mean, I know an easement was an issue with that last time well, we talked. Well, so. take care of Yeah. Okay. I, uh, Doug went down and measured. I was over there too. And I watched him actually move the footers okay. by hand from point A to point B. So Fair enough. Yeah. Plan director. I think you've probably heard about everything <laughs> with uh, Derek and what we got going on and um, just trying to stay on top of properties and, and people. Okay. We have a motion and a second to accept department head reports. Any further comment? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Claimed July 2nd up to July 15th. So the total docket is $166,379.44. Make a motion to accept the claim from July 2nd to July 15th. Second. Motion and a second to accept claims from July 2nd to July 15th of 2022. Any further comments? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 I make a motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Aye.